Today, we're doing a pregnancy Q&A because since sharing the news, I have been getting a lot of questions from you, a lot of the same questions, a lot of questions that if I'm being honest, I have been avoiding it because they are not quite as simple as what can be addressed via a quick comment or DM. So if you think I've been ignoring you, I have not been ignoring you. I got you, hopefully we'll see. Before we get into it, I want to say a huge thank you to Seed Daily Symbiotic for partnering with me on today's video and at this point, I feel like this entire pregnancy, I have been raving about seed for quite some time now. We're going to talk more about it, how I incorporate it into my pregnancy routine later in today's video. For now though, I will put a link in the description box down below, as well as a code to save 15% off your first month's supply. How did I really feel finding out I was pregnant at six months? I am a type A person. I like knowing what is going to happen, when it's going to happen, and I work very hard to plan many aspects of my life so that I can know these things. I can have a sense of control. I do not let life take the wheel when things are messy. It is stressful for me and as I realized through this experience can also sometimes feel shameful for me. So to be perfectly honest, when I found out I was pregnant, it was overwhelming. This is gonna sound weird, you can hate it if you want, but I've never been pregnant before, so it's the only frame of reference I had. When I got my first dog, like not a family dog, but an adult dog, a little creature I had to be responsible for. I knew I wanted this dog, I loved this dog from the moment I saw him, but on that car ride home, the insecurities started to creep. Can I do this? Am I ready? Do I need someone to give permission to me? It wasn't a question of whether or not I wanted this sweet little bean, but rather if I could be everything that this baby or puppy needed of me. If you watched the announcement video, you will know that the way I found out about baby was kind of crazy and so on that day, I really wasn't processing anything. It's when I got home that the feeling started creeping. I wasn't ready to tell anybody. So in those first few days, I did a lot of journaling. And while one side of my brain wanted things to be clean on the straight and narrow, on the path I had been planning, like five year plan kind of thing, what I started to realize was that that side of my brain wasn't thinking entirely rationally. And I was putting so much energy into resisting the love that I already had for this baby for fear of looking messy or how other people may perceive me or underestimate me or how this hypercritical part of my brain would perceive me or underestimate me. So once I realized that, it really came down to, you know, you've got two options. You can either sit and stay stuck with these feelings and keep spiraling for the rest of this pregnancy and not show up as the person or the mother that you wanna be. Or I could acknowledge that what I'm feeling is messy. These are big feelings and they are going to feel intense. They're going to feel overwhelming. They're sometimes going to feel opposing, but I can take that energy and use it to fuel stepping into a better version of me. A version of me that is not afraid when life does not allow for very careful and meticulous planning, a version of me that is okay if life's path sometimes accelerates in a direction that I maybe wasn't seeing. Part of adulting is realizing that there is nobody who can give you permission. It is only you who can make peace with and find meaning in your feelings. There are no guarantees, but my guarantee is that I am going to love this baby and commit to learning with this baby. Both of us in sync, in parallel, growing mom, baby, family, living life. And that brings me peace. Any morning sickness, nausea, vomiting, digestive symptoms. No, literally nothing until that six month mark, which I talked about this in my initial announcement video. Long story short, when you are growing a baby, your organs are getting rearranged daily. This can put pressure on your lungs, stomach, digestive tract, like literally everything in your body, in your abdomen abdominal cavity that is surrounding baby. And depending how baby is positioned, this can result in some pretty intense digestive symptoms like constipation, which fun fact during pregnancy, not only is baby putting pressure on your digestive tract, which can kind of like block certain things or make it difficult for things to move smoothly, but there also are changes that occur with your digestion that result in a slower transit time. So your body's actually moving food along your digestive tract more slowly so that it can extract as many nutrients as possible 
from what you're eating. So it's like a double whammy for not being able to poo regularly. The standard advice, if you go on any pregnancy site, you're like, I'm constipated, help me, is just eat more fiber, have a little extra water. Well, the problem is if you go cranking up your fiber content, it is just going to further these symptoms because fiber does slow down your digestion as well. And if you're not consuming enough water with that fiber, it can make your stool, technical term for poo, harder, like actually like physically harder and also harder to pass. But how and why I incorporate seed in my routine. Like I said, the standard advice for pregnant women who are struggling with constipation, who are struggling with digestive symptoms, much of it is quite lacking when you are already in a pregnancy, having so many changes to your body and to your routine. If I'm gonna make a change, it's gotta be easy. I already got enough on my mind. I got baby brain. I'm not gonna be remembering to do things. I love seed because it is breastfeeding and pregnancy safe. I have been taking it throughout my entire pregnancy, even before I knew I was pregnant. I love it because it's just two capsules, first thing in the morning, no refrigeration required. So even if you have baby brain, like take it, put it on your bedside table so that when you flip over, it's the first thing you see in the morning. The way it works is it's a daily symbiotic. So it's basically a two-in-one prebiotic and probiotic. And it's designed to have total body benefits, but especially if you're experiencing digestive symptoms, it can help with the ease of bloating, help keep you regular, ease constipation. It's also gonna help support your cardiovascular health, immune function, and the list goes on. One benefit that I find really interesting for pregnancy is it can actually help with micronutrient synthesis. So again, ensuring that you're getting as much nutrition as possible from your food for you and baby. Help things move more smoothly because it just sucks when you're not pooping. So if you wanna check out Seed for yourself, I will put that link in the description box down below, as well as a code to save 15% off your first month's supply. Little location change, just finished up my workout, but we got a few more questions to bang out, so let's go. Before you knew, did you ever feel baby move and think, what the heck is that? Did I essentially feel baby's kicks before I learned about baby? No, I have IBSD. I feel like every video I've made recently I'm like reintroducing myself to a support group. Hi, my name's Abby. I'm IBS. IBS stands for irritable bowel syndrome. The dash D means that my symptoms tend more toward diarrhea. So the way that I explain this to people who don't have IBS or who maybe don't know someone who does, think of the last time that you had food poisoning. This is at least in the case of IBSD. And you barely made it to the toilet. It's like your butt touches the seat and the floor drops out from under you. It's like from the top to the bottom there's that wave in your stomach sometimes there's little twinges little twangs little cramps little gas bubble passing through it is not enjoyable it is like you are being attacked from the inside out now of course and thank goodness my symptoms aren't always that extreme but this does explain how i could have missed some of the fluttering that comes in early pregnancy as these feelings were not unusual for me did you really not question having a missing period for six months Never have I had so many people interested in my menstrual cycle. I am flattered. I'm glad you guys want to know, but no. I explained this more in the original announcement video, which I will link down below, but over the course of my life, maybe this is kind of embarrassing, I have only ever had a few natural and regular periods. I was prescribed hormonal birth control, like the pill, when I was in my early teens, probably within about a year of my period starting because I had very, very intense periods, terrible, debilitating cramping, like every PMS symptom. They were irregular and my doctor said, hey, it's gonna fix everything, let's get you on the pill. I stayed on the pill for over 10 years, which fun fact that I only learned really when I got off the pill is that the period that you have on the pill is not a real or natural period. It's literally a withdrawal bleed from not taking the hormones that week. So for over 10 years, I did not have a real, natural, or regular period. I was on the pill, which is completely different. When I got off the pill in late 2021, I partially got off because I wanted to work on my future fertility. I anticipated, given that I had a history of irregular periods, a history of very severe periods, likely hormonal imbalance from that being my starting point, but also like years of fitness extremes, I thought I would need quite a while to 
regulate my hormones to get things back on track, I thought that fertility would definitely be a struggle for me. So I was over the moon when the first month off the pill, I got a period. I had like what felt like not a symptomless, but like a normal period. Following that, I had a few normal periods, no crazy PMS, no crazy cramping, like they came relatively on time. And I was just so thrilled about that. I was so proud of my body, so grateful for my body. However, toward the end of the year, I had a traumatic event, very hard on me mentally, wasn't really eating, wasn't really sleeping, it was definitely relying on training and exercise as a means to kind of like not even regulate myself emotionally, but just as an escape. And so when I missed my period in January, that was the first period I'd missed since being, I guess, regular-ish again, um, I didn't really question it. I wasn't surprised, but I did take a pregnancy test just to make sure. Pregnancy test came back negative. I thought, okay, not surprising. You know, our hormones are just a mess. We're a mess right now. I stayed in this hole of not really thriving mentally for, yeah, longer than I'd like to admit. I wasn't taking great care of my body. And so when I kept missing my period, I wasn't happy about it, but I also wasn't surprised. And in my mind, I'm like, okay, well, you haven't been doing the thing that makes the babies for like the past little bit and you had a negative pregnancy test. So I just thought that that meant, okay, you know, I'm losing weight. All signs point to you shouldn't be fertile anyways. That was that. You can think it's stupid. You can think it's embarrassing, but yeah, I was really struggling mentally and maybe had I been in a better place mentally, I would have questioned it. I would have done a follow-up test in February. I don't know. Maybe we can always think if things were different, they would have been different. Yeah, of course, you can go through the hypotheticals all day. Something I have noticed a lot in the comment sections below the announcement videos and like the ones that have kind of popped off are people talking about irregular periods. And I didn't realize how unfamiliar a large group of people are with the fact that like women can have irregular cycles and it's not always a complete red flag for every woman if she misses a period one month or if she misses it for a couple months like when I first got my period as a teenager I got my period like three or four times a year definitely wasn't pregnant I'm not saying it's healthy I'm not saying it's normal but it's definitely common and it's definitely cause for like hey we should probably try to get to the root cause of this are you afraid to give birth no I am actually so excited I would even say giddy for labor and delivery which has had you told teenage me, like, would have thought that is absolutely crazy. Had you told me this even just a few years ago, I would have told you that's crazy. You're definitely lying to me. And I say this as somebody who has previously web MD'd every complication of pregnancy, everything that can go wrong, like C-sections, prolapses, all kinds of stuff. But something I've joked about in my posts on IG and TikTok that's not completely a joke to me is that I am training for this pregnancy like an athlete because the more I read even some of those kind of fear-mongering things about pregnancy, I realized that through education about your body and awareness about how things work, there is actually so much more than you realize that is within your control. There are so many things that you can do that should help improve or that can help improve your labor and delivery outcomes, making for an easier labor, quicker delivery, like faster recovery, all that jazz. Plus, selfishly, and I never thought I would think of it this way, but now that I am pregnant, I have really enjoyed pregnancy more than I ever thought I would. This has been completely different from what I imagined. This is actually the most feminine and empowered I've ever felt in my body, which is just wild to me. And I am only going to get to experience this a few times in my life. So my goal is to experience this pregnancy, this labor, this delivery as completely as possible. I want to feel all of it. And I'm not naive in thinking that there won't be pain, that there won't be, oh, just a little pressure. Like I'm not naive in thinking that this is going to be a fairy tale, that it's going to go perfectly, that I'm going to follow any sort of plan. But I am just trying to take it all in. And so I would say more than being afraid of labor and delivery, I'm afraid that the experience might somehow be taken away from me, either by a complication or by a pushy doctor or by somebody being on a schedule that is not dictated by my body. That's what I'm afraid of. But compared to the excitement, I feel like it pales in comparison. Of course, I'm excited to meet baby, but I'm also excited to finally experience this thing that, again, you only get to experience a few times in your life. 
if that. So that's me, that's it for today's Q&A because I am sweating buckets right now and my camera keeps overheating, but I do hope you enjoyed this video. Like I said, I have, this pregnancy has been so different in so many ways than what I ever imagined. And I have genuinely been happy. This is the calmest, the happiest, the most optimistic I have felt mentally in a long time. This is the most feminine and empowered I've felt in my body. So if you're seeing that coming through online, like the glow is not just from the hormones, like I'm, I'm really feeling it. I'm really happy. And I'm just so glad that I can share this journey with our community. So before I go, quick reminder, if you wanna check out Seed, the daily symbiotic I take that's breastfeeding and pregnancy safe, I will put a link in the description box down below as well as a code to save on your first month's supply. Otherwise, I gotta go, I gotta go shower, I gotta shut this camera off, but I can't wait to see you in the next video.